Hi, Ben here. Today we're going to talk about what electrons look like. You're probably all familiar with this image of the atom, a positively charged nucleus made of protons and neutrons being orbited by negatively charged electrons, similar to how planets orbit the Sun. We call this the Rutherford model, and while useful, it's not entirely accurate. The thing is, rather than existing in a single point of space, electrons move so quickly that the uncertainty principle comes into play. That is, that you physically cannot define a single point where the electron will be at any point in time. What we can do, however, is define the space that the electron moves around in, and then say there is a very high probability that the electron will be within that area. We call these defined areas orbitals. There is a lot of quantum mechanics and mathematics which are used to describe orbitals, which I recommend you go and read about, but they're beyond the scope of this video. Instead, as a nice quick introduction to orbitals, we're going to simulate a single atom of hydrogen using Orca, and then visualise the orbital of just one electron. I'll be using Orca and JMOL, two brilliant pieces of open source software. If you'd like to follow along, please go ahead, pause the video, make sure you have them installed. To simulate the hydrogen atom, we start off by first making a directory in which to do the calculations. We then are going to make a .imp file using Notepad. So we'll open up Notepad and we'll type the following. First off, we will declare that we'll be using the PBE0 basis set. And then we are going to declare the coordinates of the hydrogen atom. This is a single atom in space, so it's very simple. We first type asterisk, x, y, z. The next thing to type is the charge. Hydrogen as a singular atom is not charged. And then we need to type the multiplicity. This is a little bit complex, but you can think of this as the number of unpaired electrons plus one. We have one electron. We need to add one to that, therefore the multiplicity is 2. On the next line, we're going to define the coordinates after the atom. So we'll first type H as the atomic symbol for hydrogen, and then we'll put three zeros separated by tabs, and then we'll place an asterisk. And this simply states that we have a hydrogen atom and it's in the center of a set of Cartesian coordinates. We'll then just save this as a .imp file. So navigate to the directory you've made to run the calculation in, name it hydrogen.imp, and then save it as type all files so it is saved as a .imp file. Then we hit save, we can close the input file, and this is all we need to get going. We then need to open up the command line to use Orca to run the simulation. If you're using Windows 10, there's a very nice shortcut. If you click in this address bar, simply type cmd and hit enter, a command line window will be opened directly in the directory you want to work from. We then need to input the command to run the simulation, which is simply orca space hydrogen.imp greater than hydrogen.out. And this says, hey, orca, use this input file I've made to generate me an output file. If we hit enter, a few seconds will pass. And when we see this line again, we know that the calculation is finished. And if we look back into our directory, we see that we now have a .out file. Let's open this up in Notepad. The .out file contains a lot of information, but for the purposes of this video, all we need to do is find the orbital information. If we scroll down, we're looking for the section that says orbital energies. And here you see that it's separated into spin up and spin down orbitals. Don't worry about what this means. The key thing we're looking for is this OCC or occupancy column. This number indicates that this orbital here is where the electron lies because it is occupied by one electron. We're going to make a note that it is orbital zero which actually holds the electron. We can now close this dot out file now, if we want to visualize that orbital, we need to move back to our command line. And we need to type in the following. Orca underscore plot hydrogen dot 
gbw minus i. Now what this says is run the orca plot command, look for hydrogen.dbw and make it interactive. We hit enter, we can see here that we are given this output. So this is an interactive menu where we will type a number, hit enter and then orca will understand what we've told it. So the first thing we need to change is the type of plot. If we hit one and enter, we will enter this section of the menu and then we need to choose the type of plot. We need type six, which is an atomic orbital. We hit type six, hit enter. Next, what we need to do is change the number of orbital to plot. We need to ensure that we're plotting molecular orbital zero because that's where the electron is. If we hit two and hit enter, it will tell us which MO that we want to visualize. If we simply hit zero, we can ensure that that's the case. The final thing we need to do is select the output file format. Now, with the freeware that I use, I recommend using type seven, which is a Gaussian cube file. Now, if we type 10, it will generate the plot and we will get this message at the top where it has made the output file hydrogen dot atomic orbital zero dot cube, which says that it's used the hydrogen dbw file, it's made an atomic orbital, it's made an orbital based on orbital number zero, and it's a dot cube file. So we'll exit this program in Orca by typing 11, command line is restored to normal, and now we can close this window. And here we have a dot cube file in the directory where we've been running our calculations. To visualize this, we're going to need to open up JMOL. Before we load anything into JMOL, I'm just going to change the background color to make it a little easier to see. You do this by right clicking in this window here, going to color, going to background, and we're going to set it to white. The file we generated was this .cube file. If we just drag and drop this into JMOL right now, it won't be terribly useful for us. First, we need to drag and drop this .xyz file. The .xyz file just contains the main atom. This you can think of as the nucleus, but it is way bigger than the nucleus actually would be. Now, what we need to do is click this .cube file and simply drag and drop it in. And we see this big blue sphere. Just to make it a little easier to see, if you go into Tools and Surface Tool, if you select ISO Surface 1 and click Ghost On, you should be able to see that the sphere is reduced to a band and then this mesh is used to visualize the rest of the orbital. What this orbital is telling us is that the electron exists within this sphere around the nucleus. Which makes sense, doesn't it? If you had a object orbiting a nucleus and it was going very, very quickly, you would see it essentially everywhere at once and it would be a sphere shell around the nucleus. If we want to export this, simply right click, file, export, and we can export it as a Peneg image. I'm going to navigate to the directory I'm doing the calculation in and then just hit save to get that image there. So that's how quick and easy it is to use your PC and free software to visualize the electron in a hydrogen atom. If you found this interesting, please let me know. It really does help the channel. Join me next time when we're going to take a quick look at the more complex atomic orbitals in a Krypton atom.